Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Crystal Ann Compton and I hope you are having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. In this video, I am going to be sharing with you once again because I feel like I have to. I feel like I have to. I feel like you need to know this. I don't know if you do know it, but you've got to. I have a podcast with Elenique Marie, my very good friend, and it's called Miraculous Thinking. And I tried to tell you before because I shared one of our episodes before and we're just starting but I just in the episode that we just cut I felt spirit moving so strongly so strongly and we're talking about specifically prayer we get into Neville Goddard and what Goddard says about prayer but we're talking about prayer as an animating manifestation force and how to use prayer not as a beggar Okay, save a wretch like me, not as a beggar, but using prayer as um, an empowering and embodied manifestation principle. We get into so much. We talk about Jesus and Gethsemane, and we talk about some scriptures, but also personal anecdotes and stories about prayer. And I just think we need this right now because now more than ever, we need to be joining our hearts and our minds and our intentions together and praying for new outcomes for ourselves, but also for the world. And I believe we can do this. Now, I am so excited about Miraculous Thinking, the podcast, because when I tell you that we are building in massive amounts of content for you, I mean it. It's not just the conversation, which on its face is so rad and meaty and substantive. It's not just the conversation, but every single week, Elenique is offering a meditation, or we might be offering an ebook, or like a PDF ritual, or something to help listeners and viewers integrate the amazing and high vibration energy of all of these classics that we're going to be going through. And all of it is free. All of it is free. And I'm so jazzed about it. So if you're not subscribed to the Miraculous Thinking Podcast, you better get yourself subscribed because this is probably the last time I'm going to be sharing that content here on this channel. So if you like what you're about to watch, and I can't believe you wouldn't, okay? <laughs> can't believe you wouldn't. But if you like what you are about to watch, then go over to our YouTube channel, link in the description, subscribe to us there, and also check us out on your favorite podcast platforms, honey, because we're doing stuff. God is moving and I want you to be a part of it. We also have a Facebook group. I know a lot of you don't like Facebook, but it's the Miraculous Thinking Podcast Facebook group. And if we've got PDFs and eBooks and audio files, we're going to be dropping it there. So I'll put a link for that as well. If you want to join the group and get access to everything, that is how you do it. All right. So that was a lot of preamble before the video, but let's get right into the video now. And I hope you enjoy it. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Miraculous Thinking. I'm your host, Elenique Marie, and with me is my beautiful co-host, Crystal Ann Compton. And today we're coming to you with chapter three of Feeling is the Secret, entitled Prayer. Mm -hmm. And boy, am I ready for this. Me too. And we've been talking that this is so juicy and powerful, yet so intense and short that we've actually decided that Crystal's going to read it. Yeah. So We're in case you didn't get reading. to read it, right, <laughs> before before we started, just in case, you're going to get it anyway. Well, and the reason I, I felt compelled to do it is because I believe, just having worked with Neville for like oh, so many years, that when he was speaking in a lecture or when he was writing, he was actually laying down activations and attunements. And so sometimes just in the reading of it, I can feel myself kind of getting altered a little bit. And I think when we're present with what Neville is saying, we are receptive to adjusting so that we can do the thing we can manifest. So I think it's really helpful, actually. That's why we, we've been quoting it these last couple of weeks and, and actually pulling out the words because they think they're so meaningful. And so, yes, we're going to read it. It's very short. Uh, it'll probably be less than 10 minutes. But we do want to ask you, as we are reading, just to kind of get comfy. I mean, you can be in your car and comfy. That's fine. This isn't a meditation. But do just get comfortable and try to be, in, in terms of your intention, try to be as present with the words as possible and just follow along 
and feel the energy of them as we go through them. But before we do even that, we've always got a little bit of housekeeping we want to talk about. And the first thing we wanted to mention is that we're, tr- we're actually going to change it up a little bit. Uh, originally, we were going to do Neville Goddard, Feeling is a Secret, in September, which we have done. And then November was going to be the Kaibalion, which we're going to get to, but we thought it would maybe be a better fit. And maybe Elanique, you can speak to this instead of doing the Kaibalion, which is again, addressing the universal laws. Instead, let's get to um, the four agreements because Mm -hmm. the four agreements is prepared pretty foundationally as well. Kind of like feeling is the secret. Tell us what you think about that. Well, absolutely. I think what's incredible about the four agreements is that what we're doing is now we understand a little bit about universal law. Mm -hmm. Neville has told us some techniques, but sometimes there's some things that get in the way of being able to utilize these techniques. And that pretty much is our conditioning, right? So we thought that it would be beneficial to say, hey, let's take a minute. Let's deal with what's going on within us potentially which is what the four agreements does. It really allows you to start working on the triggers as they come up. Because the more you work with those triggers and heal them and release them, then you're finally able to get in the correct energy so that you can allow and attract that which you want to attract. Yes. So we've decided to create that little pit stop through, you know, spring cleaning of our souls and minds before we continue on to the deeper or extension of these already very deep universal laws that we're discussing. Perfect. Okay, so if you do not have the four agreements at this time and you want to follow along as we discuss it, do go and get a copy. Maybe you can get a used copy or you can go on Amazon and get yourself a copy so that you can follow along as we begin starting the first week of October, which is coming right up. Right around the corner. We are almost through with Feeling is a Secret. It's crazy. It is, but we've been having fun. I don't know. We've been having a lot of fun. (laughs) Too much. (laughs) (laughs) Too much fun. Um, The other thing we wanted to remind you that we do have an email account. If you want to reach out and talk to us, give us some of your comments, feedback, and or ask questions, please feel free to do that by just writing us at miraculousthinking at gmail dot com right mm-hmm. yeah one word <laughs> miraculous yeah. thinking i have so many email accounts i don't know if you know that about me <laughs> i also have so many domains it's hard to keep everything together so it's miraculous thinking one word at gmail.com send us a letter we read everything if you are following along on youtube then you can also leave a comment mm-hmm. we will check the comments there and thank you because we've received some very encouraging feedback here and there we're very small but we're going to be yes. growing but people seem to like it elanique it's inevitable. It is. We're growing, honey. <laughs> it's going to happen. But and if you're not if you're listening on the pod and you haven't checked us out on YouTube, you're missing out because you can see our face balls, right? Yes. You can see our eyes. <laughs> you can see us. Um, and please uh, subscribe and like and comment and interact with us on YouTube because that does help us in the a- algorithm and as far as the podcast, uh, if you would be so kind to just leave us a, re- a review, a good one would be great. But I mean, yeah. we, we don't want to coerce you or anything like no. that. A good no pressure. review <laughs> would be so fantastic. Thank you so very much in advance. And the other thing we wanted to remind you about is that we kind of changed how we're doing meditations and supplemental content instead of building that into this episode, which we did, I think, just the first time we are, or is it first and second time? I don't know. I think it was just the first time. And then okay. the second time we did, you, you separated it out into two different. You're right. We're only on the yeah. third chapter. Thank you. This is it. Yeah. <laughs> Keep me in yeah. line, Eleni. <laughs> I'm too astral. So Mm. instead of including the meditation or the supplemental content in this episode, we are going to have an additional episode if you're listening via pod and it's going to be um, 4A, I think it would be 4A and it says meditation and a title and all you have to do is just go right into it. We're not going to be introducing it. It goes right to the meditation. So make sure if you're listening to the meditations that you are in a comfortable place, that you are not driving, Mm -hmm. that you have the ability to be present with that work. And last but not least, well, Elenique, why don't you talk to us about the ebook that is going to be coming up next week? We are so excited about this ebook because as we were doing the course, uh, discussing the book, we, we, I was thinking, and, and Crystal and I were speaking that, you know, how do we help people 
create this, utilize it. Because, you know, so many of us, we consume so much content, but then we don't use it. So we are masters of nothing. <laughs> and I think, you know, there's so many paths, you know, <laughs> can you relate oh my, to this? Yes. <laughs> I'm like, I'm still dealing with that, you know, pasta making machine that I bought that I was I really haven't even taken about. it out of the box. It's just, <laughs> exactly. I know it's there. <laughs> so we said, okay, um, it takes about 21 days to really, con you know, make a habit stick, but we are going to start you off with a 14 day journey into manifestation made easy, utilizing some of the best techniques from Neville Goddard. And we're going to have a beautiful morning ritual daytime ritual and evening ritual, which you can utilize um, for 14 days and just really start to watch your life transform. So when we finish up our last chapter of Neville next week, it will be available for those of you that um, subscribe or that join our Facebook group. You'll be able to just uh, download it, download the ebook for your use and feel free to share with I the mean we are so awesome. I have yeah. to say, <laughs> a little bit. I'm, I'm <laughs> so great at being humble. <laughs> no, but I, I just feel like the conversations themselves are so substantial. And we give ourselves the latitude to get into some really interesting areas. And the content we are covering is so intentional. Like these are books that have changed our lives and some that we're so excited to get into. And then to have like additional meditations that or, or rituals and protocols that we might be offering as well. Like that's also such a bonus and so wonderful to help embed the things we're talking about. Yes. And then in addition to that, we're going to have an ebook and I'm sure this won't be the first one that we will offer. Nope. So there's just a lot of content and we're really offering this to you so that you can get excited about your spiritual walk and mm -hmm. live your life in a spiritually evidential way. Like, as opposed to saying, yeah, I believe in that, like living the belief that you have about yourself and what's possible in this world. That's where we all want to be. And so mm -hmm. all of this content is being created for you so that we can share that with you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so ex I'm excited about it, my friend. Me too. Me too. Is, is there anything else housekeeping related that we have to talk about? I don't think so. I think that's everything. Well, then let's get into Neville. Let's do it. Let us not delay. All right. So we are in chapter three of Feeling is the Secret by Neville Goddard. And you're going to hear the cadence of my voice begin to change. And I'm not trying to hypnotize you or anything, but it just is the way that it happens when I read Neville. And again, I think it's because these are energetic and electric sentences and words that we're going to be going over. Um, just kind of get present with what we're going to be talking about. Again, this chapter is entitled prayer and i love it elenique because this mm -hmm. isn't this isn't the prayer that the kind of prayer that your grandma taught you about unless you had a really cool grandma some yes. of us did this yeah. is not your conventional traditional prayer this is a different kind of prayer so thinking caps on listening ears forward <laughs> okay all right here we go prayer like sleep is also an entrance into the subconscious quote when you pray, enter into your closet, and when you have shut your door, pray to your father, which is in secret, and your father, which is in secret, shall reward you openly, end quote. Neville says, prayer is an illusion of sleep, which diminishes the impression of the outer world and renders the mind more receptive to suggestion from within. The mind in prayer is in a state of relaxation and receptivity akin to the feeling attained just before dropping off to sleep, which we know, Elenique, is hypnagogia. That's that mm -hmm. drowsy kind of dreamy state that we're in right before sleep. Yes. Neville goes on to say, prayer is not so much what you ask for as how you prepare for its reception. Can I just say that again? Prayer is not so much what you ask for as how you prepare for its reception. Quote, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you have received them and you shall have them. End quote. The only condition required, the only condition required is that you believe that your prayers are already realized. Your prayer must be 
has to be, is guaranteed to be answered if you assume the feeling that would be yours were you already in possession of your objective. The moment you accept the wish as an accomplished fact, the subconscious finds means for its realization. To pray successfully then, you must yield to the wish, that is, feel the wish fulfilled. The perfectly disciplined man is always in tune with the wish as an accomplished fact. He knows that consciousness is the one and only reality, that ideas and feelings are actually facts of consciousness and are as real as objects in space. Therefore, he never entertains a feeling which does not contribute to his happiness, for feelings are the causes of the actions and circumstances of his life. Now, on the other hand, the undisciplined man finds it difficult to believe that which is denied by the senses and usually accepts or rejects solely on appearances of the senses. Because of this tendency to rely on the evidence of the senses, it is necessary to shut them out before starting to pray before attempting to feel that which they deny. That's a heavy sentence. Remind me, Elanique, let's go back to that mm -hmm. after we're done. Neville goes on to say, whenever you are in the state of mind of, I should like to, but I cannot, the harder you try, the less you are able to yield to the wish. You never attract that which you want, but you always attract that which you are conscious of being. Prayer is the art of assuming the feeling of being and having that which you want. When the senses confirm the absence of your wish, all conscious effort to counteract this, this suggestion is futile and tends to intensify the suggestion. Prayer is the art of yielding to the wish and not forcing the wish. Whenever your feeling is in conflict with your wish, feeling will be the victor. I'm going to say that again because it's so important. Whenever your feeling is in conflict with your wish or that which you seek to manifest, feeling will be the victor. The dominant feeling invariably expresses itself. Prayer must be without effort. In attempting to fix an attitude of mind, which is denied by the senses, effort is fatal. To yield successfully to the wish as an accomplished fact, you must create a passive state, a kind of reverie or meditative reflection similar to the feeling which precedes sleep. In such a relaxed state, the mind is turned from the objective world and easily senses the reality of a subjective state. It is a state in which you are conscious and quite able to move or open your eyes, but you have no desire to do so. An easy way to create this passive state is to relax in a comfortable chair or on a bed. If on a bed, lie flat on your back with your head on a level with your body, close the eyes and imagine that you are sleepy. Feel, I am sleepy, so sleepy, so very sleepy. In a little while, a faraway feeling accompanied by a general lassitude and loss of all desire to move will envelop you. You feel a pleasant, comfortable rest and not inclined to alter your position, although under other circumstances, you would not be at all comfortable. When this passive state is reached, imagine that you have realized your wish, not how it was realized, but simply the wish fulfilled. Imagine in picture form what you desire to achieve in life, then feel yourself as having already achieved it. Thoughts produce tiny little speech movements, which may be heard in the passive state. Elanique, I'm going to want you to opine on, on that in a moment. Thoughts produce tiny little speech movements, which may be heard in the passive state of prayer as pronouncements from without. Okay, I, I, I botched that a little bit. Let me read that one more time. I'm sorry. Thoughts produce tiny little speech movements, which may be heard in the passive state of prayer as pronouncements from without. However, this degree of passivity is not essential to the realization of your prayers. And here's the mic drop. All that's necessary is to create a passive state and feel the wish fulfilled. 
all you can possibly need or desire is already yours. You need no helper to give it to you. It is yours now. Call your desires into being by imagining and feeling your wish fulfilled. As the end is accepted, you become totally indifferent as to possible failure, for acceptance of the end wills the means to that end. When you emerge from the moment of prayer, it is as though you were shown the happy and successful end of a play, although you were not shown how that end was achieved. However, having witnessed the end, Regardless of any anticlimactic sequence, you remain calm and secure in the knowledge that the end has been perfectly defined. Amen and amen. Amen. So many good chunks in there. Oh my gosh. Before we talk a little bit about prayer and and drill down into this, um, what was the section I wanted you? You said um, when it says, because of this tendency to rely on the evidence of the senses, it is necessary to shut them out before starting to pray, before attempting to feel that which they deny. That was the first one that you mentioned. So can you clarify for us? I know we talked about it a little bit last week, the evidence of the senses and what that actually means. Mm-hmm. Well, so there's different levels to this, right? Because your senses uh, give you information through many means. You have the eyes, you have the ears, you have touch, right? You have sensing even if you want to consider the sixth sense, like what you think that you know and you don't know how you know. So what he's saying here, we rely too heavily on the senses. The senses can only tell us what is already out here in objective reality. They cannot show us what we are creating with our desire. So we need to pull our attention away from what is outside. We need to stop assuming that what is outside is the truth. And we have to believe that what we are creating within us is what is truly real. As the outside is only a a symptom of of a cause, right? Mm -hmm. It is the effect, right? Right, it's the effect, exactly. So... So I believe he's saying that. So it's that he's saying it is necessary to shut them out before starting to pray. So before you sit down to pray, you need to, that's why prayer usually we consider that you are in a quiet space, alone, without distractions, without noises, without anything to interfere into this place very, very within that you're about to enter. And then before attempting to feel that which they deny. So what is it that they are denying? that wish that you have. So if you want to feel light and thin, and at the current moment, you are carrying some pounds that you don't want. How dare you? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But the senses, the senses are saying, no, you're not that person. You're not that energetic, thinner version of you. You are this person that is uncomfortably, you know, has some pounds that you don't want. Well, your own scale is saying that, right? The yes. evidence and of your the bones senses. and your mm-hmm. joints might mm-hmm. be saying, ouch, you know, I have this extra weight on my knee and that's when my knee hurts. So if you focus on what those senses are telling you, those senses are contradicting your wish. The wish is, I want to feel light and airy and energetic and thinner. So you have to shut out those senses because the senses will deny that your wish is possible. Right. That's how I interpret that. And that's exactly right. And thank you, because I think you simplified that. What do you think of Neville's uh, talking about like lying down in a bed with your head level and um, normally you wouldn't be comfortable, you wouldn't want to stay there, but because you're doing this work, you're going to, what do you, is that a complication in your mind of what needs to happen in order for you to get into state or is that about right? I think that he's probably working on some energetic principles, although I have found that sitting vertically is usually the way that I can get into a state much quicker because I feel like I'm aligning with the core of the earth and with the natural um, field that is around a human being and around the earth. But he has his philosophies and I'm sure that it works Mm -hmm. for him. And Mm -hmm. like I said, everything, there's many paths to get to the same place. And for some people lying down on their bed is going to work best for them. And for some people standing up will work best for them. But actually for some people walking around in nature, will work best for them. Because now we know that we are so individuated as people 
that what is a meditative state to me or peaceful to me might be a nightmare to you, right? So I think that we don't have to get caught up in these details. You can try it and see if it works for you. But if it doesn't, feel free to experiment with it. Yes. And I think it was Albert Einstein who, while he was meditating and in this passive state, he wasn't fully asleep. It was, I don't think it was a dream. I think he was in active imagination. So he was, he was in the passive state and he was allowing his imagination to roam in order to come up with a solution. And he ultimately did. And it was the theory of relativity, but I think he liked to sit in a chair, but a comfy one. So he can get real comfortable and he can let, like, let down, Mm -hmm. like the body's relaxed, but he's not lying down so he's not going to fall asleep so he strategically placed his body which i think is good to hear all of this because it gives us permission to find out what works for you and you hit the nail on the head with me like when i'm out in nature which is already high vibration and i'm walking um around and i'm being mindful and i'm I'm connecting with nature or i'm out by the cows that's so spiritual for me and i Mm -hmm. can find myself in a passive state and here he does say that you don't have to do all this stuff. You don't really have to do all of the things like lie in a bed. All that's necessary is to get into that state, however you Mm -hmm. get into it, and then feel that the wish is fulfilled. Exactly. And I think that's where we have, now we understand so much more that our path is our own and we don't have to do it the way somebody else does it. It may not work for you. Mm -hmm. And then what ends up happening is we beat ourselves up because we did it wrong. You didn't do it wrong. It wasn't tweaked to you. So feel free to play around because all of this, he uses the word play in here a couple of times, I think, in this book, but it's this idea of playfulness, right? Um, Don't, you cannot force it, allow it, surrender to it. And playing is like that, right? We're playing with this idea. We're enjoying it. We're not attached to the outcome. So I think that's very important. Let's just let go of the expectation. Whatever gets you there is getting you there. And that is the point. Like he does say that prayer must be without effort. And I thought this would be a good thing to maybe drill down into because Mm -hmm. um, I've been to Catholic churches, I've been to Pentecostal churches, and both pray in very different ways. But it does seem like a lot of efforting, actually. Mm -hmm. Let me light a candle. Let me do my rosaries. Let me do all the rituals and all the things that I have to do in order to get into maybe a state of worthiness that will allow my prayer to be heard. This entire chapter to me is just screaming, don't pray like that. Don't ever mm-hmm. get go into pray and have a supplication or something that you want and come into that transaction as a beggar, as right. somebody less than. And mm-hmm. we grew up with the, the hymn, um, Amazing Grace, that saved a wretch like me. Mm -hmm. So we've been kind of programmed to see ourselves inherently less than the divine and inherently less than source that created us. And we could have that conversation and it would be interesting. But the point I think Neville is making is that it shouldn't be hard. You shouldn't be trying a lot. You shouldn't be thinking about how it's going to happen. I know I want this thing, but how's the universe going to manage that? Mm -hmm. And you have to have this state of flow, which to me is the state of God. It's the state of creation. It's a movement and action. It's moving towards something. And you are the creator of that. You are dictating where that flow is going. You don't want to stop the flow by getting in your own way because you think you're a wretch or that you need to beg God. God is asking you to enter into his courts with praise Mm -hmm. and thanksgiving and with joy and high vibration and embodied. That is what prayer is. Yes. And I think that um, what you described with the ritual, um, you know, there's a place for everything. And some people yes. are ritualistic, right? So there's people that are very traditional. And when Christmas comes, they want to do the typical things that you do in Christmas, right? The advent calendar and the socks go here and we're going to make the eggnog and they're not going to get out of that script. But that script for them is almost like priming them to take them to a spiritual experience. Sometimes the way a relationship can be, right? When you know you're going to have a hot date and you're like, okay, I'm going to shave my legs. <laughs> I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get my hair cut. I'm going to get my you nail lucky kit, guy. <laughs> right? So you're going to go do all those things, but they are these little rituals that we do that, that are priming us for what is coming, right? So I think that there can be a place depending on your personality to utilize ritual as a means of something that builds anticipation and joy. 
Yes. As opposed to yes. having it be sort of like those, um, what are those things called in the bowling alley when you throw the ball and it holds the ball so the ball doesn't go into the, the, the gutters? The, I, I you don't know, the ones know that but I do know it. Yes. yes. So I feel like sometimes people feel like prayer has to be like that in traditional religion. It's like, no, you cannot get out of these two guardrails. That's what mm-hmm. it is. Mm-hmm. The guardrails, right? So I, I, I personally love ritual, but I like to utilize it with joy and levity. It is all about like your state as you're doing it. If you're well, actually coming from Pentecostalism and then my second husband was Catholic, his whole family were, they were Catholics, but they were the kind of Catholics that loved being Catholic. Whereas so many (laughs) of the Catholics I meet are real angry about having been Catholic, but they loved being Catholic. And I really was able to experience the pageantry and the meaningfulness of lighting a candle or the rosary, which I've got rosaries right there from my mother and from other family members. And I think if you're entering into the ritual, allowing yourself to go passive, allowing yourself to be present with what that symbolizes versus doing the damn thing. Because if I don't do this, then I don't get there. It's all about the way you're viewing yourself in that interaction. And I I think ritual is so beautiful. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love it. And I remember as a Catholic, I would say recovering Catholic, (laughs) but you know, um, I, one of my favorite prayers and looking back, I wonder what this says about my psyche was, you know, the part in the creed where they say, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. And I used to say that like with every inch and every Mm -hmm. cell of my body, because I just felt deeply how imperfect I was. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hi, God, please, do you hear what I'm saying? I'm saying, please, you know, only you have the power. I know I'm not worthy. You say that before communion, right? I know I'm not worthy, but just say the word and I shall be healed. And so it's, it's, it's a bittersweetness because there's a humility in it where you're saying to God, um, I know I have a ways to go, but then there's this other aspect to it, which is where you're, like you said, you're, why are you not worthy to receive your own father? to receive that which you are, to vibrate with that. Where is that coming from? And what does having a belief like that do to your capacity to actually connect with your father? Right. Right? Because if you think Mm. you're not good enough, you're going to have that relationship, like even in the world, in, in our reality, right? When you have parents and you don't feel that you are meeting up to your parents' expectations, you get really messed up kids. Yes. That never feel good enough. Right. So if you never feel good enough, you're not going to, you're not going to shine. You're not going to shine what you are, your light, your specialness that is unique to you. So it's, it's a bad policy in regular life. And it's a bad policy when you're going into prayer to talk to your father. Can you say that prayer one more time though, please? It says, um, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. There's so many other layers to that though. Right. When you're saying, I'm not, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. That could be um, an articulation of the human condition. Here I am on this planet right. with all my sins and problems. And I'm in this vessel at this time, which I, which I believe as a spirit, I signed myself up for. So it's an right. acknowledgement of human condition, but just say the word logos, right? In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word, by the way, was God. Was so God. there's a power to the word. So there's like a lot of different interesting yes. things that are there, but it, it really depends on, uh, it always comes back to your concept of self. Who are you in that prayer that you're mm-hmm. saying? Yes. Are you saying that prayer in acknowledgement of incarnation, acknowledgement of life, acknowledgement of this is the vessel, this is the instrument that I am, but are you also activating the word? Are you also knowing that you are you are worthy to come to you and ask for what it is that you want? And see, even Bible says, ask and it shall be given, but there's a kind of way to ask. When yes. you come to it begging, wretch like me begging, he that hath, more is given. He that mm-hmm. hath not, more is taken away. So if you go into the prayer having not, and just an abject uh, vibration of lack and what your wish unfulfilled, then you can only ever create from lack. So it mm-hmm. is about priming yourself and conditioning yourself to hath before you even start to pray. That's kind of a mind F if you ask me, because you're asking for something, you want something to create it because obviously you don't have it right now, but unless you can get into the mind state and the vibration of, I do have it though. I do have it though. 
your prayer isn't successful. So it's about yeah. finding that's why lying down head is in, in alignment with your body mm -hmm. and making sure you can get into state and cancel out what the world is telling you is imperative Absolutely, because, because the Absolutely. word the world is telling you who you are and the scale is telling you how much you weigh and my bank account is telling me how much i'm worth unless yep. i can develop the facility to turn away from that and recognize it as the illusion that it is and go into my closet with my father in secret yes and be in that space which is all inside of me like i can't actually create it completely completely agreed and and it is very difficult in the extent that you are doing something it's like counterintuitive right mm -hmm. if i if i had it why would i be asking for it right if i was that why why would i be here asking for that but something interesting that i read uh today when i was preparing and asking myself that question about prayer right like what does it really mean and um i think it was in wikipedia or wikipedia or something it said um it's an invocation that seeks to activate a rapport mm -hmm. with an object of worship through deliberate communication. And I really like that. <laughs> say it again. <laughs> I'm sorry. I like to yeah. say stuff twice. Can you say that again? Prayer is an invocation or act, which I thought was interesting, invocation or act, that seeks to activate a rapport. And that word we can interpret in many ways, right? Mm -hmm. With an object of worship with de through deliberate communication, deliberate mm -hmm. communication. So there's quite a lot of, and so they, and then they go on to say in the narrow sense, the term refers to an act of supplication or intercession directed towards a deity. So that is their sort of generalized uh, interpretation of prayer. And we are taking now and condensing all kinds of prayer, you know, Christian mm -hmm. prayer, Buddhist prayer, whatever you want to say, like a uh, new age prayer, however, but it, it involves some of this. And I think what's beautiful is that when I think of invoking something, it's almost like I'm calling forth something that I have a right to call forth. I'm, yes. I'm calling on something that is me, that belongs to me, that I have a right to do, right? So I'm calling it forth and I'm, I'm calling it forth and I want to vibrate like it. I want to connect within it. I want to have that rapport with it. I want to match it. Mm -hmm. So for me, when I imagine what Neville's saying is we have to get into, we have to invoke it. We have to speak to that within us, to that God force, God, mother, father, whatever you want to call it. And then we've got to raise ourselves into a rapport, into that wish fulfilled, into that place where all things are possible. And when we are there, communicate with that energy and really flesh it out. So here's my wish. And, and let me talk to you about it. The way you would to a friend when mm -hmm. something great happened to you, right? You're like, oh, I bought, my, I bought a new car. Let me tell you about it. It's red. And I get to do mm -hmm. this with it. And I get to do that. Mm -hmm. So God, the God, the creator wants to share in the story, wants to be included. The thing is we keep including him in really bad stories mm -hmm. that we keep telling. And I'm sure they're not very fun. For the creator. They're like, Have we, we're going to tell this one again? All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it one more time, Joe, you know. Right. So for me, I think that's what Neville is saying. It's like, hey, let's invoke this power. Let's build rapport with it. Let's match it. And then let's communicate with it. And if we do that, mm -hmm. then we're going to be able to have our wish fulfilled. It's what we were talking about last week when Neville quoted scripture talking about um, he calls things that are unseen as though they were and the unseen right. becomes visible and so we kind of tried to break it down last week but you did it so beautifully just now like getting to the state getting to the level of rapport and then the intentional communication like lovingly interacting with yes. and um creating like made manifest through your articulation of prayer that which you are seeking to create 
but already have through the exactly. conversation that you're having with God exactly. and with yourself, you know, because we see, we feel ourselves to have a state of lack, but as our, our higher self, as our soul self, we have access to all things, infinite resources. It's that we identify ourselves with Crystal yes. and Compton, human being yep. person alive on this date, as opposed to identifying with the being that I truly am, that is the masterful creator, the ye are all gods that Jesus was speaking. That's me, that's me, mm -hmm. and I have everything now. And so it's about shifting out of what the senses are telling you is real and back into, I have it all right now. I have it all yes. right now, hallelujah, thank you, God in me, I have it all right now. That's right. And and funny enough, last night I was trying to go to bed. I was like, okay, let me watch a YouTube video, something high vibe, right? Neville says high vibe. So I'm like, okay, let me put something. And I don't know why this Abraham Hicks video popped up. And it said, if you are watching this video or if this video has appeared to you, it's because you're ready to hear what it says. And I'm like, well, I'm ready. <laughs> so I clicked on it and it's hard talking to this gentleman, I guess, who attended one of her, uh, you know, one of their things. And um, she says, listen, your higher soul is always creating the highest thing for you. Always. It's always there. It's always speaking it. It's always holding it like a gift. The problem is that your personality, Elanique Crystal, is having their own thoughts. And those thoughts are a lot of time driven by fear. So that thing of already having the wish fulfilled, it is already in you, but you have to access it. Like you have a Christmas present and now you're on a scavenger hunt looking through door number one and two and three, and maybe it's outside and maybe it's under the tree. It's somewhere, but you haven't found it yet. So that's what we're doing with this. It's, it's, I think if we think about it in that way, then it becomes more manageable for people. Like, well, if I'm already that, well, then why do I have to go look for it? No, you are already that. Your higher self is already holding that for you, mm. but you've got to go find the door. You've got to turn down your noise and tune into higher self station. <laughs> yes. Right. That is powerful that your higher self is always creating the highest version of everything for you. Yes. That's so comforting to think of it, it that is. way. Mm. It is. You know, then you don't have to create, right? You, you are just, I, I am, you're I allowing am. the higher selves already doing it, right? Personality, right. Elanique doesn't have to do it. Personality, Elanique just has to allow. Right. Which echoes Neville saying that the subconscious creates in a way known only to itself, meaning you're never going to know how it works as Crystal Ann Compton, human being person. And you don't need to, like, you really don't <laughs> need to. And that's just a problem anyway, because that's just a means for you to trip up and start getting worried mm -hmm. about things like so don't worry about how it's happening. Don't worry about how your higher self is creating all the awesome things that you could ever want in this life. Just know that it is and conduct yourselves accordingly. That's the yes. simple, the simplicity of it. It's simple, not mm -hmm. always easy, right? Because we get caught and trapped in the illusion. Yes. Um, I wanted to say that as we were preparing for today, I wanted to think of like examples of prayer that have really impacted me. And a couple of things came to mind, if I may share. Absolutely. Um, some, and a couple of them are actually from the Bible. And then one is just one of my own, my own experiences, but I've, I remember reading as a child, I had, would have had to have been around 14 or 15 when um, I was reading this story of Samuel, who was the prophet who ordained David, who of course killed Goliath, <laughs> but the King David, um, but he was a prophet Samuel and his mother's name was Hannah. And she was married to a guy who had a lot of other wives who were just pushing out babies like it was their job nonstop. And here's Hannah who couldn't conceive. And she was so torn up about it because all she wanted to do was to give her husband a child and to have a child herself. And, you know, I spent about uh, seven or eight years of my life thinking I was infertile and, and kind of going through the pain of not being able to conceive and just not wanting nothing more than to become pregnant and to have a child and being denied every month. And I know the pain of that. And, um, so there's this part in this passage where Hannah goes to the temple, the priest of the temple is Eli, and she falls before the altar. And she's in such a state of bereftment, is, is that a word, just so aggrieved, I can't, because she cannot have a child. And she's praying. 
And the prayer begins to transform from words that make sense to just body utterances, grunts and groans, wailing, crying, but it's still a language. Mm -hmm. She's still talking to God. She's still asking for something. And Eli, the priest, comes upon her and thinks immediately, oh, she's drunk. She's intoxicated. Like, I got to get her out of the temple. But no, she's not. She's, she's just having a profound moment of connection and supplication with God. And of course, the story goes in that prayer, she says, you know, if you just give me a son, I'll commit him to you directly. And so she ends up having Samuel and she gives Samuel immediately to Eli and he becomes the prophet Samuel. And Eli's a whole nother Oprah we could get into one day. (laughs) But he goes on, obviously, to be the prophet Samuel. But I just always felt like that's so intimate. Mm -hmm. That's like a friend just pouring it all out. Like these are my wounds. They're so deep that I can't even say words anymore. It's just Mm -hmm. the sound of my spirit. What I think we could actually call light language, light language. Um, This is your soul speaking. It doesn't have to make human sense. That was the first type of prayer that really made an impact on me and made me feel like I could have a personal relationship with God. And also God hears me because she gave, God gave her Samuel. Mm -hmm. The second instance of prayer was of course, uh, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Now, Jesus also taught the disciples to pray, right, and gave them the Lord's Prayer, which is a very magical prayer, a very yes. um, creative prayer. But it's the prayer that he utters in the Garden of Gethsemane. And again, he's in so much pain here, you know, and we really see Christ as the human being man, 33 years old, who knows he's going to die tomorrow. And in Gethsemane, he asks his two disciples who are with him, can you just stay up with me? I'm scared. I'm like, I'm freaking out a little bit. I just need some friends. They promptly fall asleep. (laughs) And so it's just Jesus. um, And he enters into the prayer where he asks God to take this cup from him, Mm -hmm. which we've discussed. And he ends it with, but thy will be done. Like the the supreme and most beautiful capitulation of self. Like I, I understand though, like your prayer that you uttered, I understand that I'm asking, you know, I'm understanding, I'm understanding though, that it's your will ultimately that's done. Mm -hmm. And I just, for years and years and years, especially as I was a Christian, I always went back in my mind and in my meditation to Gethsemane because that was the Jesus that I related to so very much, so very much. And I wish I could have just been there with him as just sitting there with him. I just wish I could have, you know, it just makes me feel so Mm -hmm. many things right now Mm -hmm. because I think we all feel that way sometimes, Yes, you know, we're just like, this sucks, man. Mm-hmm. I can't believe this thing just happened. And I just, yeah. please help me. But if you can't, I get it. I just thought it was really wonderful prayer. And then there's a, an example that I have, which is very similar, which is maybe why I've chosen all these types of prayers, which seem very sad, but my father had died. And my father was so iconic to me, you know, the great antagonist of my life, just a, a complicated person. And he died very young. He was younger than me. He was 52 when he passed and it was a pulmonary embolism. So he passed while he slept and nobody saw it coming. And I I was just devastated when he passed. And I, I, it was my first experience with somebody leaving the world. Um, I'd never had that before. And I just was so, so sad. And I remember just falling to my knees in my apartment in Hawaii and just bent over, just crying and praying uh, for my dad because he died and I thought he was not saved. And so I was very torn up about that because I was a Christian, right? And just pouring out and it became like Hannah's prayer for me. It was the first time I had ever in my life transitioned from praying in a way that was conscious to praying just with the sounds of my body and my spirit, you know, just, I love you, dad. I just pray for you and I want you to be happy and I want you to be at peace. And I wasn't saying the words, though. I was just communing with that which I was desiring to create for myself and for my father through God, who I believed in, you know, just a human, human, human moment. And that was a powerful prayer. And prayer can be like that. But I've all, all, I've also, honey, I've marched into prayer too. Okay. Like who is it? Joseph with the horn, (laughs) Jericho, (laughs) right? I've marched into prayer too. I have marched in, I've cleared things. I've called in healing. Um, but there's something very special to me about 
being utterly brokenly human and just laying prostrate before God who loves me anyway, why does snow come just as you are? And that's the yes. beauty of that's the beauty of God. And that's the beauty of being human as well and of this life. Yes, absolutely. And um I love that that scene with Jesus in Gethsemane. I, I always would think about that, but it would make me cry. Mm -hmm, me too. When I was a little kid and I remember reading that story and I was like, why did they leave him alone? Like, why wasn't I there with Jesus, you know, to keep him company? Because this idea of having this weight of, of this abandonment after everything that you've done, right? You came to bring the light. You've been a teacher. You've done the miracles. And now this one time that you ask for something for you and he's alone. You know, so I just remember being so moved by that and so sad. And even now when you were telling it, like my eyes get teary mm -hmm. because like I feel it. I feel that moment. And and I think I feel it because we've all experienced that as well. You know, we've had that moment when we think we've showed up for people and then the moment when you really need them. And and the thing I discovered through the things that have happened, and especially when my son passed away, as you know, is that who was there for me was God. That is who was there for me. I mean, I had friends and I had family members, but the only person that I could be with that understood what I was feeling was God. It was just like I I felt like there was a an embrace, like a cocoon, and I just crawled up in there and said, you know, Lord, wrap me up in your arms because I can't do this. I cannot do it. And I can't explain it. And I don't want to talk about it. I just need like shelter. You know, I need yeah. love. And that's exactly what I got. And so I think, like you said, those unspoken prayers are sometimes even more powerful than anything you could ever utter. Because honestly, language is a very human thing, right? And, and language a lot of times is uh, creates separation. Because we reduce concepts and ideas down to words, which is just a representation of a truth. It can never be the truth. You can't take something real and reduce it to a word. So when we're able to be with God in that place where there are no more words, just desire, just the feeling and trusting that your father, your creator, your mother understands you, feels you, and will answer you then you have something so deep and so beautiful and experiential, you know, mm -hmm. beyond the mind. Yes. <laughs> I was, you were recounting that and I'm getting emotional too. Um, but that's the power of prayer. And you know what? I believe prayer works. And I've, you know, good. I've been saying, I'm not the first to say, we, but I've been, I believe that if we come together, especially if we join our hearts and make sacred agreements, you know, Jesus said, if you and I agree, on this earth about anything good bad or indifferent mm -hmm. our father in heaven is going to get up and give it to us yes. that's the law and the prophets that's just how it works that's how the universe works that's how manifestation works but you and i first have to enter into that with intention consciousness thinking mind masculine which neville would say we have to agree with the feeling of it yes that it already is and here we go our father in heaven is dancing he's given it to us that's the power of prayer and i think prayer can change absolutely anything and you know when you get into prayer for others there's a scripture and i can't find it and by the way it was joshua went to battle against jericho okay. <laughs> what it was one of those j guys but when yeah. you get into scripture there is i'm, I'm going to look for it this week and i think it was paul who was talking about the power of your prayer for somebody who's not saved mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the power which you know we we're not going to get into salvation doctrine that's not what we're talking about who doesn't know peace who doesn't right. know god's grace who doesn't know the the possibility of the divine you can intercede in such a dynamic way on behalf of somebody else and neville actually talks about this throughout his works and in some of it it sounds like you can actually go back in time time mm -hmm. travel through the mm -hmm. imaginal chamber and i can actually pray for my father by going back in time and remembering him in a feeling way mm -hmm. that is magnetic and vibrational have a new kind of conversation with him broker a new kind of peace and understanding and i believe that sets me free in the now when i do that make that peace with my father from 40 years ago and wherever he is he gets the benefit of that too you can do that with ancestors 
-hmm. You can do that with your line. You can do that with your future, your kids, their kids. Like you can pray in all kinds of amazing ways. But again, it's about who you believe you are when you enter into prayer. When you're wrapping yourself up in the love of God, you're a child of God. You are God's beloved. God's Mm -hmm. got you. And that's what I think Christ was talking about and Neville's referring to when he's saying, go in your closet where nobody else is. They don't know where you are. I don't know where mom went. You're curled in a closet in the quiet, Mm -hmm. just you and God. That's the ideal place to create. And sometimes it's just the ideal place to be comforted and just to remember, okay, there's a reason I'm here. Okay, there's a reason I got to go on today and I got to do the things that I need to do. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's beautiful. And I love how Neville has been able to to explain that to us in a way that um, is so simple yet so profound. The instructions are very simple, but like you said, um, simple doesn't make it easy, right? So we have to practice, which is why next week is so important, why we were so committed to producing this ebook for our listeners, because we want you to have the experience of this, right? We don't want them or us to just have the theory of this. The theory does us no good. It brings us no peace. You know, we want to have this experience and know ourselves to be those creators that we are and that we are co-creating with an unlimited field of possibility. Yes. And you know, the scripture says, walk by faith and not by sight. Mm Mm-hmm. But I want to emphasize the walk part. <laughs> like you yes. have to move. You have you gotta to do it. You got to do it. And it, it is mm-hmm. a theory and we can talk about it all day and get all you know, knowledgeable about all the things. But if mm-hmm. you're not applying it and if you're not working the mechanics of manifestation, then you are not going to see the evidences of it and the screen of your life. Your tomorrows are going to continue to show you in just a different version of everything that you've already gotten. So if you want something new, you got to walk by faith. You've got to walk it. But how it. many of us don't do that all the time? We know what we're supposed to eat, but we don't eat it. You know, we're supposed, we, we know we you're, have You're to calling me out again. Do, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, but I have that too. Like, it's like, I know what I'm supposed to eat in the morning, right? And mm. I'm like, why don't you have that green juice? Just drink the green juice. And the voice is telling me and, and saying outside of me, this, this, this guidance, you know, green juice, right? It's going to feel so good. when you drink. But then you're like, I have a bagel, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> With cream you cheese. You are calling me out. <laughs> Give me the cream cheese. <laughs> All of it. <laughs> so, so it's this thing that we want something and yet we don't want it at the same time. And I think that's why the four agreements is going to be so powerful because we are going to deal with that shadow aspect of us that doesn't want it. There's a part that wants and a part that doesn't want. That's a lot what I see when we do parts work. You know, when I do parts work with people in hypnotherapy, what is that part that's sabotaging you? It's just as real, right? So we need to talk to that part and figure out why are you doing this? So we can step into wholeness because from wholeness, we can manifest anything. Mm-hmm. This was good. <laughs> <laughs> this was I agree. This was juicy. <laughs> it was so juicy. I mean, yeah. And and I think we need to remind ourselves of this power. Yes. And again, uh, the kingdom of God is within you. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be within somebody else. It's not going to be external to anything that you got going on. It is all inside of you. You have the apparatus. You have all of the tools. You came here with your tool bag and with the map and a blueprint and all of your innate gifts and talents are within you now. Maybe not activated, right? Maybe right. You're, you don't know, maybe not conscious mm-hmm. to them, but you truly, 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 truly do have all of this inside of you right now. So now go walk. A walk yes. in faith. I love it. Walk in faith. We need t-shirts. We do. Yeah. Merch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can get some merch, baby. Yeah. Well, this has been wonderful. Um, are we doing a meditation this week? Or what do we do? What do you think I, about that? Well, I want to create I actually wanted to create one separately. I'm going to send it to you because okay. I I believe that prayer is something, I don't want it to feel like a regular meditation. I want Mm -hmm. to create something for people that they can really do alone. Mm -hmm. 
So instead of more of a meditation, it's going to be more a how-to, a little okay. how-to. Okay. So uh, we will add that. We will okay. attach it to, you know, in a separate little file, but it's going to run a little differently. I'm not going to do the same types of leading into meditation mm -hmm. and more a an explanation of how do you talk to someone that you want to get to know better, that you trust, and with whom you want to create something, right? So mm -hmm. an experience of building trust, because I really think that at the end of the day, the reason why prayer is difficult for people is because ultimately they have a lot of doubt about whether anyone's actually listening. So what we need to do is build that trust. When we have trust, then talking to God, to source, will be easy. So that's mm -hmm. what we will be preparing for them, an exercise in trust. So let's um, get a timeline for people. Do you think that'll be available when this podcast drops or do you maybe yeah. within the week of that? Like we don't yes, want to rush yes, you. Yes, yes. Okay. No, no, All no. Right. So, yes, okay. Absolutely. All right. So if you're listening to this or if you're watching this, um, is it going to be in video form as well or is it going to be just an it's audio? It's just going to be audio. Okay. So if you're watching on YouTube right now, this should incentivize you to look at the link in the description. Well, yeah. actually, wherever you enjoy your podcast, yeah. just look up our podcast, Miraculous Thinking, and you'll find it. And so it'll be a file added to the podcast, not necess not to YouTube. So exactly. go look for it there. And if you're in our Facebook group, by the way, because we have one. Yeah. We're special. Yes. And we can up <laughs> upload a file there too. So if you're in yes. the Facebook group, we'll make sure to upload it there so you can access it as well. And that's what we're going to try to do, right? Keep everything, a lot of the different tools and, and, and things in that Facebook group. That's why it's such a good thing for people to join because a lot of the materials and worksheets and prompts that we're going to start doing with some of these things for journaling and exploring, we're going to put them in the Facebook group under, um, I believe it's files and materials. They have like a couple of links there. Awesome. So I know yeah. I know not everyone's on Facebook, but if you are on Facebook, you should join us. And if you're not on Facebook, you might want to think about joining us just because it's going to be so awesome. And hopefully soon we're going to have our own website. That's right. We are getting so organized. Yes. <laughs> we are getting Very. organized. We're having conversations. We are creating in the imagination because it has to be done in the imagination before it That's crystallizes right. into the physicality. But we got it going and we are moving in that direction. But we've just started. This is our first month. I think we're doing great. I think so, for too. our I first month. I have to tell you, I love you so much. I love you, too. No, and I want to thank you because I really can't have, well, that's, um, I need to change my languaging. I, I don't normally have uh, conversations with people that um, understand what I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> allow me to be funny, right, or make cool. jokes. You know, sometimes people think, well, if you're a spiritual person, teacher, then you can't be funny or have any sin or trans, but you allow me to be exactly as I, as I am. But I'm so grateful because you teach me, you teach me, you teach me. And it's not that I'm not teachable or that I'm so high, it's hard to teach me, but there's something about you and the countenance and carriage of it all, the way that you hold yourself vibrationally, that just makes it easy for me to get into presence and to learn. So I just Don't want to thank me, you for you're that. You're going to make me emotional. No, Don't I make love me you. emotional. I, I love you. I love you. I'm just saying I love you. I know everybody else out there loves you as well. Oh, so thank you. Well, I feel the same way. And I just really appreciate that we're able to do this together. You know, and we're all here to do this together. Right? Mm -hmm. We're all here to teach one another. And that's what the Course in Miracles says. It says the teacher is the person who temporarily has more. And the student is the person who temporarily has less. And so the teacher is just sharing from the little bit more that they have to those that temporarily have less because we all have it all. It's just we've forgotten. So, See what I'm saying? That's what I mean. I've got goosebumps. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I've got to make a quote of that on the video because that's so good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I and guess thank I'm, you listeners. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I know people are vibing with this and more people are going to come and we're going to have a circle of conscious people who are absolutely in love with learning and continuing to do so. Uh, but until next week, I guess everybody have a beautiful week. Do what you can to walk in faith, honey, not by sight, but by faith. Turn not away from me. the senses and get into that closet with your father. I love absolutely. you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.